Greetings, everyone. Today I come to you from Banning State Park, a beautiful park not far from where I live. And it's autumn here right now, so you might see a few leaves falling in the background. And uh, you might also be able to hear the river down there in the gorge. But at any rate, it's a beautiful day. And today I want to talk about the three books of Solomon. Now, the first one is Song of Songs, which is very clearly a young person's book. Uh, Jewish tradition says he wrote this when he was a young man, and there's some debate, did he actually write all of these uh, verses, or did he collect various love songs? Nevertheless, it's very clearly a young person's book, and it goes back and forth between the man and the woman calling to each other, pouring out their love, comparing the, each other to various things in nature, I have to admit that comparing someone to like uh, your hair is like a flock of goats flowing down from Gilead is a little strange to me nowadays, but there is a beautiful symmetry uh, to watching a flock of animals move, as you can see in this video of sheep. So we can say that Song of Songs is a book of spring, and that's the reason why we read it uh, in, at Passover, on the Sabbath during Passover. The flowers are blooming. I went to see if the pomegranates were in bloom, etc., etc., etc. So this is a book that Solomon wrote in his youth. Now, Proverbs is a middle-aged book. And I got to say that when I got to be middle-aged myself, I found myself repeating the same maxims, same wisdoms, the same chachmas, as we say in Hebrew, uh, down to the, my grandchildren, my children, whatever, uh, because uh, we pass this knowledge from generation to generation. And in fact, in the beginning of Proverbs, it's a father saying to his son, this is what you should do, this is what you should not do, here's the wisdom of the ages. Chapter 31 is a mother talking to her son about who he should choose for a bride. So obviously this is not talking to little children. This is middle-aged people talking to young adults. Now I asked myself, what would middle-aged be uh, in Solomon's day? Because people did not live as long back then. I mean, some people did, but life expectancies were shorter. Well, we do have a text called Pirkei Avot, that spells out the stages for education. It says age of five to learn the Bible, age of 10 for the Mishnah, age of 13 responsible for keeping the commandments, etc. It gives the age of 40 uh, as the time for insight, for Bina, which by the way is the basis for many people believe you should not study Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, until you reach the age of 40. It's not a hard and fast rule, but you do need some life experience to understand a lot of the things in mystical texts. Little children don't have the life experience yet to really grasp what that's all about. Pirkei Avot also gives the age of 50 as the time for giving counsel. So I would say sometime between 40 and 50 is when Solomon wrote this book. We come now to Ecclesiastes. Kohelet in Hebrew, which is an old person's book. This is an old man's book or an old woman's book. Solomon is looking back on his life. And now that I'm in my mid-70s, I'm starting to do the same thing. And you look back and you realize how much of the stuff that you did was just, as he says, hevel hevelim, vanity, useless, nothing, you know, all the struggling for money, all the struggling for power, all the things we see. There's nothing new under the sun, says Solomon. Now, I had a smart Alex student say to me once, well, what about computers? Solomon didn't have a computer. No, <laughs> he's not talking about technology, not talking about a new kind of sword or a better chariot. No, he's talking about human behavior. And really, there is nothing new under the sun. You know, he describes how I've seen a man accumulate a lot of wealth. He dies, his kids inherit it, and they squander it. I've seen somebody lose everything that they own overnight. And if that's where you're putting your value, you know, we've all heard stories about how in 1929, when the stock market crashed, 
There were businessmen who literally jumped out the window of a skyscraper because they felt their life was over because they had lost all their money. So Solomon is reminding us that all of these things in the long run are really nothing. Yes, you have to earn a living, you got to feed your family, it's nice to have good things, and that's the other part of it. He says, what is there to do but to enjoy what you have and do what is right? Enjoy it now. Because there's nothing worse than a miser who piles up money, tons of money, and never gets any joy out of it at all. You can see this in a lot of various rich people in the world today. You look at them, do they look happy? You know? And so, in the long run, in the final word, Solomon says, what is there to do but to love God and keep the commandments? Because ultimately, that's all we take with us to the next world. We love God, we keep the commandments. And not just the ritual commandments, but the commandments to love our neighbor as ourselves, to feed the poor and the hungry, you know, whatever, to take care of each other, to be a community. And that's really the most important thing. So we have the three books of Solomon. We have the young man's book is Song of Songs, and the middle-aged book is Proverbs, and the old-age wisdom book is Ecclesiastes. And if you keep those three life stages in mind, hopefully you'll keep your values in mind the way they should be. Shalom Aleichem, peace be with you, and thank you for listening.